It's been an incredibly bruising night for the Conservative Party. Two seats lost in by-elections, including one in the Tory heartland in Devon. In Tiverton and Honiton, the Liberal Democrats overturned a 24,000 majority, leaving Boris Johnson looking more vulnerable than ever. The Business Minister, Paul Scully, joins us now. Paul, when the comms team called your phone this morning, did you nearly not answer it? <laughs> no, I'm a minister in the government. It's my responsibility to take the good and the bad, and clearly it wasn't a good night for us last night. We knew it was going to be difficult, mid-term in, you know, in the uh, election after 12 years of Conservative government, uh, with difficult headwinds around, uh, around cost of living. So we've got to listen to that. We've absolutely got to listen to that, but we've got to act and we've got to respond because people worry about what's the money in their pocket. Um, the, and their future prospects, and that's what we've got to tackle with um, the, growing the economy. The, the chair of your party that. didn't allude to that. The chair of your party has resigned and said it can't simply be business as usual and someone has to take responsibility. What's your response to that? That was Oliver Dowden. Yeah, well, it's not... Look, it's, I, I, I appreciate all of the stuff that Oliver's done. I've worked with him closely for a, a number of years. I was the deputy chairman before, before he was appointed as chairman. Uh, but he's right that it's not business as usual. This, it, it's, it's, a, it's about responding and delivering the, the, on the, uh, the majority that we got because of the, um, the trust that people gave in, in us to tackle the big issues of the day. We've tackled Brexit, we, uh, we're getting that done, we've tackled COVID. Now we've really got a face into the cost of living, which everybody faces at the moment. Now, it's lovely to speak to you, Mr Scully, this morning, as it always is, but we were expecting to speak to Oliver Dowden, the now former chairman of the Conservative Party. So um, the fact that, as, as Adol said, that he has resigned, we were shocked, were you shocked, and I'm sure you've looked at his resignation letter in detail, and it is ambiguous who he thinks should take uh, responsibility for the devastating defeats, quite frankly. Well, I, I have read it, um, and I think you know he he uh, obviously wrote that in the uh, the wake of the election results early this morning. Um, and he, you know he's 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 a good man. He's he's worked really hard to uh, campaign to get the campaigns right in those two seats. It's not to be. We've got to really work hard to get those seats back in a general election to restore trust. Uh, uh, in, from those electors in the, in the next general election. But he um, felt it, it was incumbent on him to take that responsibility as the chairman that was organising those campaigns. Well, I'm not and sure what... it is clear that he feels that because he said somebody must take responsibility and I've concluded that it would not be right for me to remain in office. So that's not saying that I'm taking responsibility, is it? Do you agree with him? that somebody has to take responsibility? And if you don't think, think it's him, as you clearly don't, because you said he's a good man and he's worked hard, who should? Well, I think we've all got to take responsibility because we're all delivering as government ministers, including the Prime Minister. And the Prime Minister's always said that the buck stops with him, that he takes responsibility. And what he's doing now is listening. He has to respond. He has to deliver on the promises made and deliver on the biggest, single biggest issue that we're all facing at the moment, increasing inflation, which is leading to the cost, cost of living pressures on, on, on people up and down this country. Do you honestly oh. believe that that's why they lost uh, in Devon, in that seat that's been Conservative for 25 years because of the cost of living crisis, with that huge swing against the Conservatives? Do you honestly believe that it's simply because of the national cost of living crisis, or do you believe it's something more? I think there's a whole host of issues that tend to build up for a midterm uh, in, in an election, and we are or have already made changes. You've seen the prime minister make changes in number ten to try and um, uh, mitigate the, the the ethos that was there and join the so-called party gate. Um, and so that he, we can have a far more robust um, approach to, to government to be able to deliver that. It didn't make any difference, though, did it? He's made magic. those changes well, no, and it didn't make any difference. Sorry no, to interrupt you, but, no, no, you know, no, we've no, spoken no, since yeah. those changes and you said you hoped it would make a difference, but it didn't, because there is a change that still hasn't happened at number 10, some would well, argue. Kate, I, okay, I think what happens with those kind of things, they need time to bed down and we need time to communicate them as well. What we've really got to do, not just act on behalf of people, 
but we've got to tell people uh, what we are doing, the 37 billion pounds worth of support that we're pumping into the to, to help the most vulnerable in our society, the lowest paid with their fuel bills and these kind of things. But it's all about communication. And that's why Mr. we've got to listen. Mr. 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 Scott, Mr. Scott you, you've mentioned a number of issues. Tell me, do you think any of these issues have had any bearing? Partygate, the most fine street, Downing Street, the most fine street throughout the whole COVID pandemic, Wallpapergate, the COVID care home scandal, this so-called oven-ready Brexit deal, the threat to the Good Friday Agreement, lying to the Queen, lining to Parliament, described by the future King of England, the Rwanda immigrant policy is awful. Two of the ethics advisers revi uh, resigning, Bar our castle, the fact that at one point you weren't going to give children free school meals. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, we've got there's, there's so many on here that I haven't even read out. Do you think any of those had any bearing in the by election? I think some of them, um, add all that you which talk ones? about, you which, know, you ones? About party, which ones you do you think? Party. Which ones well, you talk those? about? That I'm, uh, I'm answering part, you talked about party like those things that have been in the news recently. But if you're looking at Brexit, you're looking at COVID, these are things that over the last couple of years where actually. We've had um, good electoral success uh, join us in local elections and other things, and the electoral polls um, have, sh have, have shown that people have still been supporting us. But people now have been able, in midterm, to, to um, say, you know what, you need to, to, to be listening and responding to what we're facing now. We're not, we, we don't think we've been doing enough. And that's why we now have to double down and make sure that we show that we are, that we are, that we are tackling the biggest issues at hand in the here and now, not looking back to yeah. years. I mean, you mentioned Brexit is still bringing you a, a electoral success. Didn't work in Wakeford, did it? They they took that seat from um, the Labour Party. The last election, people believe it was because it was a big supporter of Brexit. Um, gone back. No, what I was saying about that is that Adam was um, basically reading out a whole load of issues for, for over two years now. Uh, but people are making their decision in the by-elections, in the here and now, what they're, what they're seeing now. And um, we, we, we're we working on, through, through some of the issues around trading with me as a business uh, minister uh, around, uh, around Brexit, to make sure that we can smooth the passage of goods between here um, and the EU, and, and, uh, and both going both ways. But there are, and you're going to see the Brexit um, Freedoms Bill coming forward, which is going to start to help um, actually really reap the benefits and the opportunities that Brexit uh, um, has, not just for businesses in this country, but the opportunities with our trade deals right the way across the, uh, the world. Do you get tired of coming out? Paul Scott, there's, there's only a small group of you that come out and do these rounds now. So many, kind of, I assume, refuse to do it or don't get called out. Yourself and Oliver Dowden are those stalwarts there are pulled out. Oliver Dowden this morning was due to speak to most of the media and resign in the morning. Do you get sort of frustrated? Do you, is, is this getting harder for you to come out and defend your leader, the Prime Minister, while he is out in Rwanda at the moment? No, I, look, I don't mind coming on. I, you know, I enjoy coming onto your show to, to talk to you, to listen to you to and, and to uh, try and communicate with your viewers. It, it, of course, it's frustrating when we're trying to get on with the, with the job at hand, as I say, uh, tackling the cost of living issues, growing the economy that we're sometimes going through things that are up to a couple of years old because they, they tend to get rehashed um, no, not, on social not media. They're rehashed. Things like, things like COVID are not rehashed. Some of us lost, lost relatives and family in COVID. We're not rehashing those. Those are memories that will stay with a lot of people in their hearts and they, they simply do not forget. I mean, those, these aren't rehashed. The, the Rwanda immigration policy is something that's very current. These, are, these aren't just things yeah. that uh, people have, uh, want to forget about. No, no, no. I, I just said some of the things, Adam. That's what I, that's what I mean. Because clearly, there are some things in the here and now that are, that, that are current that we need to tackle. Uh, you talked about Rwanda. Absolutely, that 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 is one of them. That's why we are uh, working for to to make that policy absolutely work. Because no court has made has declared that as unlawful. There's been um, individual um, cases where where people have been taken off that flight, but we we always knew that was going to be. Um, uh, the case because it always has been when they ever anything new has been introduced to try and tackle the small boats crossing across the channel to break the human traffickers uh, business model. There's always been more. Okay, coming, been coming, back to you, coming back to your position, I mean, just, I'm just intrigued, Mr. Scully. I mean, you've been coming out for the last two years on, on this show and other shows defending it. I, Oliver Dowden's sort of given up. He's well, I can't do this anymore. Others have given up. At, at what point will you give up? Are you, are you just going to support? Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, no matter what? 
No, th- look, this isn't some sort of blank check or anything like that. I'm a government minister in a government that's that's, that's doing uh, things for people that are the most vulnerable in our society, the lowest paid and facing the cost of living. And whilst we're doing that, it is, it's part of my job to come here and to tell you exactly what we are doing and how we're looking to move forward. But nonetheless, I think the base point of what you're asking through this morning is what are we going to do now? And we need to take stock of what was a bad night for us, a clearly bad night. I'm not trying to gloss over that in any way, shape or form. I'm just saying that now we need to listen, we need to respond. People at the next election, the general election, will be worrying about what's in their pocket and what their prospects are for the next four years. And that's what we've really got to aim for. Of course they will. And uh, there is a feeling from many of our viewers this morning, bearing in mind the rail strike, bearing in mind the uh, imminent um, airline challenges with BA over the summer, that the country is broken and he has to do something quickly. Um, Do you anticipate he can avoid another vote of no confidence? Are you fearing and hearing that that is now being talked about? No, I'm not fearing anything. I mean, what will happen will happen. Um, but the but the rules are clear at the moment. There will have to be a big change if it's if 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 there's a, anything otherwise to happen. But the um, the rules at the moment are that um, that we have a year now before anybody can bring votes in no confidence. But you talked about the strikes. Uh, what we have, the country isn't broken, but the country is at the moment when we have to uh, look at the economy. We have to all work together to make sure that we don't get into a spiral of inflation. If, if the, the unions kick into uh, um, you know, pushing the particularly high uh, wage asks at the moment, that in itself will bring further inflation and really bed in inflation. And I'm old enough to remember the last time that happened, and it's not pretty. OK. Paul Scully, uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. I imagine it was uh, difficult. Uh-